I've made a few tweaks to this Game Boy and now there's no light leakage around the side. I'm going to show you how I did it. Hi, welcome back to the shed. You may partly recognise this as a Game Boy I modded a while ago, but it's looking a little bit different now. Uh, I did another IPS mod and I had a load of problems with the screen. I just couldn't get it working. Um, you'll see that in another video as well. Um, but I could not get the screen to work. I knew there'd be a faulty part, so I had to end up dismantling this one to take out all the IPS parts and then test one by one to try and troubleshoot. So while it was open, one of the things that always annoyed me about this one was that there was a little bit of light leakage at the side. You could see the edges of the frame of the LCD, which are kind of quite a bright silvery metallic colour. And when you looked at it from an angle, you could see those and you can see now I've managed to fix that. What I've done is I've masked it off with a 3D printed bracket. So I thought this would be a great little video just to give you a quick look at my new 3D printer, uh, which I've been having a lot of fun with. It's a UV resin one, um, an Elegoo Mars. Also, just to show you how something so simple can make such a vast difference. Also, I never leave things alone for long. What I ended up doing was removing the yellow and orange part and making it the ultimate boring Game Boy brown and grey. You can't get more boring than that. I kind of love it. It's like an old 1970s calculator. So yeah, I'm digging that. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how I've done it. Take a look and see what you think. This is what we're working towards. You'll notice the bottom bit's missing. And that's because of the size of the tank. To get the full size one, what I'd have to do is make it on a whole load of supports and get it on an angle so it kind of come out like that on there. But by doing that, first of all, it'd take forever because it, it builds up a layer at a time. And if it sits flat like this, it's nice and quick. And also it can end up a little bit warped as well. If it's flat to the plate, it's not too bad actually. So if you have a look at my little screen on here, um, I don't even like make out the colour, but there's a little area here that's marked in red. So basically, it's going to print the whole thing, but not that. And to be honest, that's fine with me. It's not going to cause me any problems. It's mainly the bits at the side to centre it. So this is the 3D printer I'm using. It's an Elegoo Mars. It's a UV resin printer. So you get bottles of this liquid and you pour it into a tank and it's photosensitive so it's sensitive to uv light so when it's exposed to your uv light it cures it hardens you do that a layer at a time because there's a light in the bottom and it builds up the models it's pretty cool so that's the model that we set up in there and all i'm going to do now is just press the play button to set that to print what's going to happen is the print bed will lower into the tank and start to expose one bit at a time it's got this red filter hood over the top um, to stop any daylight getting in or I tend to have uh, the blinds in my shed closed when I'm doing these prints just in case um, so now that that's started it shows me down here uh, that it is going to take just 17 minutes so if it was on an angle I'd be looking at hours quick look at how it's working what you can see on the screen is the layer that it's doing at a time so there's an LCD in there it's like a clear LCD with the UV light underneath so whatever displays on there in black is going to prevent the light from passing through. So the light is at the moment just passing through that shape, which is like this kind of shape here. So that's pretty cool. That's how it works. And then it'll swap to the next layer and the next and the next until they're all done. So I'll come back in another 17 minutes. So while that's printing, we'll take a look at what's up. So this was my first attempt at putting one of these rainbow IPS screens inside a Game Boy. You can watch the video on my channel of that whole process. Um, however, even though it pretty much covers, you can... I don't know if I can get the right angle here. But anyway, there's a little bit of the edge of the enclosure exposed when you hold at an angle you can see those and also a tiny bit of light leakage as well when it's switched on so what I want to do is mask that off by this which kind of encroaches slightly on the screen space uh, and also acts as a bracket to centre this to kind of lock you can see there how that will just sort of sit in that place so this goes in first and it slots onto these different sections here drop straight down and then you put the screen in in the gap and although there's the bit there meant to show you where it goes at the bottom basically it goes right flush to the top so that's not going to be a problem so that's going to go in there and what i've done with this one and what i'll do with the one that's printing at the moment is i've put a little bit of black paint all around it so that's just going to be virtually invisible 
in there, particularly when it's switched on, it'll block any of the light that getting it in at the sides there. So that's our plan. That's what I'm going to do with this one. Printing is all done. And what happens is that the platform moves all the way back up and whatever you printed is underneath there. So I'm going to take the lid off. So it's on the underside of the print plate. What I've got is a little hook to hang the plate so it drains all this excess resin. So all the excess resin drips off there and back into the tank and off my newly printed bracket. There's our printed bracket. What I've got to do now is try and lever that off. Just to get any excess resin off there. So you can see already the quality of that's pretty clean. Uh, I'm going to switch on my UV nail lamp because it's going to be going on there. Now what we need to do is wash off the excess resin and for that we'll use alcohol. So I've got a load of isopropyl in this tub. And I'll just pick up with tweezers there because I don't want to get this resin on my fingers. Just drop it in there. Swirl it about a little bit. And this is quite good. It's got like a little basket in there so you can agitate it a little bit. So I'll swirl it around a little bit. And even sort of move it around with the tweezers a bit. Just in case of getting the bulk of the alcohol off. I'll put it in the other way up as well, just to get the other side done. Now there was more alcohol in here, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'll leave the lid off and come back. and It's all evaporated, there's like half of it there. Um, so yeah, so that is now all soaked in the alcohol. It's this tub which just has water in. So that'll just get rid of the alcohol and the bits that the plastic that the alcohol's kind of dissolved. Get that out and just dry it off. Once that's pretty much dry, I'll just drop it in here because it cures under UV. So I'll leave it in there for a few minutes and flip it over and then we'll have our bracket ready to use. So that's my finished bracket. Um, it's got the bits to go around the screw post, all fine, and the little hole for the screen, and the fact that this slightly overlaps it. Um, but the problem is we don't want to see the grey border around there, we want it to be black to blend in. So I'm going to use a little bit of model paint to just put a little bit of black around the edges. doesn't need to be neat because we'll only see the very edge of it but what I do need to try and do is get it quite even. So I didn't design this, I got it off Thingiverse and I'll put a link in the description of where you can find that if you want to print your own and give this a go. Um, but with that now left to dry that is going to mask off my edges of my screen and stop any light from leaking through. So. It is a very handy little item and takes less than 20 minutes to print. So, how this works. The bracket sits in here and just goes around these four pegs. Then the screen, so the screen just sits in the gap there. And I'm going to put a little bit of tape on. It doesn't particularly need securing in place because once it's all closed up this bracket will hold it in place fine. Um, just move that over to there. Stuck with a little bit of double sided tape. 
And that's pretty much everything in place now. I can just get my speaker lined up and drop my main board on there, just making sure that ribbon's exposed so it can reconnect. That's now ready for the screws to go in. That's all in place. Got that masked off now. So that should be alright anyway. Uh, back half is already done but the back half has the bright orange power button which I'm going to be swapping out for a boring grey one. Already got the Pro Sound mod done on there, the internal Pro Sound or noise reduction mod, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got a separate video all about that somewhere. Now, power button. There we go, we've got a grey power button, so that can drop in here. Nice and boring. And nip up these two screws. Get our ribbon cable. You know what? Before we do that, I've got to connect this ribbon cable from the screen, otherwise, I will not be able to see a thing, which would be bad. Okay, so that's in there, and gripped, and then it's this ribbon cable to connect to here next, which is usually a bit of a pain. But this time it's going to be dead easy. Nope. Yep, there we go. So that lines up there. Now you can see the bit where it's masked off. Um, but when it's switched on, it is going to look loads better. So pop that together. There we are. Boring boy. I quite like this actually. So we've got the grey grey, grey, grey and brown. It's like it was designed in the 70s. I love it. Just get these fingerprints off. And we are done. So that's it really. Um, didn't want to go into a huge amount of depth in terms of the mods on the video, mainly just to show you how you can mask off those edges. Uh, well worth the effort to do that if you can manage to get some sort of access to a 3D printer, either if it's yours or through a friend or a local makerspace or something like that. Uh, it's a cool little piece. It doesn't take long to print. It's on Thingiverse. It's worth giving it a go. I'll see you next time. Subscribe if you want to see more. Cheers. Bye.